The Shenxian Zhuan, sometimes given in translation as the Biographies of the Deities and Immortals, is a hagiography of immortals and description of Chinese gods, partially attributed to the Taoist scholar Zhe Hong In the history of Chinese literature, the Shenxian Zhuan followed the Liexian Zhuan, collected biographies the immortals, misattributed to the Han scholar Lu Shang. Topic. Title The Shenxian Zhuan title combines three words Shen Shen – Spirit, God, Divine, Supernatural, Awareness, Consciousness Xian Xian – Transcendent, Immortal, Saint, Celestial Being, Alchemist Zhuan Chuan Commentary on a classic, e.g., Zhuang, biography, tradition. Cf. Chuan Chuan, pass on, hand down, spread. The word Shenxian Shenxian can be parsed either as Shenxian, gods and transcendents, or as Shenxian, divine transcendent. Shenxian commonly occurs in standard Chinese usage. Examples with literal meanings include both words like shen shen yan shen xian yan with eyes, seer, clairvoyant, or shen xian yu shen xian yu, fish, angel fish, and phrases like shen xian sha van shen xian sha fan, come down to earth, an immortal becomes incarnate, or shen shen zhang grin shen xian zhang ren, among people. Quote closing parenthesis quote. The Happiest Mortal Alive. Scholars have variously translated Shenxian Zhuan as Biographies of Taoist Divinities and Adepts, Whaley 1930, Lives of the Divine Xian, Needham and Ling 1954, Lives of Spirit Immortals, Dewoskin 1983, Lives of the Holy Immortals, Needham and Bray 1984. Lives of Divine Transcendence, Campany 1996. Traditions of Divine Transcendence, Campany 2002. Biographies of Divine Immortals, Penny 2008. Zhuan Chuan is consistently translated as biographies or lives, with the exception of Campany's traditions, based upon the meaning to transmit. Cone 2002-329-330 criticizes Campany's translation that ignores the fact that the word was obviously used in dynastic historical and other collections to mean biography. He also tends to refer to the content of the work as hagiographies, never as traditions, which really means something quite different in English. Topic. Authorship The Shenxian Zhuan is traditionally attributed to the Jin dynasty scholar and religious practitioner Zhe Hong, who is best known as author of the Baopuzi, Master Who Embraces Simplicity. The majority of Chinese critics. Saley 1978-299 notes believe that the version which we have today is probably not the same one that Zhe Hong wrote. Ge's autobiography Baopuzi Outer Chapter 50 records that he completed writing the Shenxian Zhuan and several other books during the Jianwu Jianwu era 317-318, when Emperor Yuan of Jin founded the Eastern Jin Dynasty. In all I wrote J. Baopuzi Nipian Napian in 20 chapters, Baopuzi Wipian in 50 chapters, 100 chapters of inscriptions Bay, Eulogies Song, Poems Shi, and Rhapsodies Fu and 30 chapters of military dispatches Jun Shu, Proclamations Shi Yi, Memorials to the Throne Zhang Biao, and Memoranda Jian Ji. I also compiled Zhuan biographies of those not listed as a matter of course, Shen Xian Zhuan Shen Xian Chuan in 10 chapters and biographies of those who in their nobility refused office, Yin Yi Zhuan Yin Yi Chuan in ten chapters. 
In addition, I made an anthology of 310 chapters of military affairs Bing Shi, techniques Fang Ji, miscellaneous entries Duan Zha and oddities Qi Yao by copying excerpts Chao from the Five Classics, the Seven Histories and the One Hundred Philosophers, and made a table of contents, tr. Penny 1996-166, Compare other translations of this ambiguous Yu Zhuan Su Suo Bu Lai Jie description of the Shenxian Zhuan. I also compiled a book on those who are not normally listed, which became the Shenxian Chuan in ten scrolls. Tr. Ware 1966-17 in addition, he composed writings in which the common people among the scholar class were not interested, including the Shen Xian Chuan Shen Xian Chuan, in ten chapters. Sali 1978-264 I also compiled biographies which are not passed down among the common people, Shen Xian Zhuan, in ten chapters. Kominami 1978-595, tr. Penny 1996-171. I also compiled Zhuan Zhuan traditions of those not conventionally listed to form Shenxian Zhuan in ten fascicles. Company 2002-118, Zhe Hong specifically uses the verb Zhuan Zhuan. Compose, write, compile. For the Shenxian Zhuan and Yin Yi Zhuan. Biographies of recluses. Which is no longer extant. Thus, Dorant 1986-677 writes. Most of the biographies are extracted from various earlier works, so Ko is really much more of an editor than an author of Shenxian Chuan. Several early sources confirm that Zhe Hong wrote the Shenxian Zhuan, Penny 1996 to 166, Campany 2002 to 119. The CA 429 Sangwazi commentary by Pei Songzi, 372 to 451, quotes the Shenxian Zhuan and notes what was recorded by Zhe Hong came close to deluding the masses. But as his writings are so widely circulated, I have selected a few of the events. Lu Shujing Lu Shujing S. 437 List of Lingbao Texts states that Zhe Hong selected and compiled the Shenxian Zhuan, the Shui Jing Zhu, commentary on the Waterways Classic, by Li Daoyuan D. 527 also attributes the Shenxian Zhuan to Zhe. The 6th century biography of the Shangqing school patriarch Dao Hongjing 456 to 536 says he obtained Zhe Hong's Shenxian Zhuan and studied it day and night and so mastered its ideas on nourishing life. Campany concludes we can therefore be as confident that Zhe Hong compiled a work titled Shenxian Zhuan as we can of almost any other authorial attribution in this period of Chinese history. But it is equally certain that the Shenxian Zhuan that has come down to us is not exactly the text that Zhe Hong wrote, 2002-119. Some scholars have questioned Ji's authorship of the Shenxian Zhuan based on textual inconsistencies, particularly with Ji's Baopuzi Nipian. Arthur Whaley doubted that Zhe Hong wrote both the Baopuzi Inner Chapter 16, Tr. Where 1966-264-5 and Shenxian Zhuan, Tr. Campany 2002-139-140 Biographies about Cheng Wei Sheung Wei, whose physiognomy caused his wife to refuse teaching him alchemy. Not only is the style strangely different, but the Shen Xian Chuan version is so meager and so incompetently told that one doubts whether the author of it is even trying to pass himself off as Ko Hung. It seems indeed likely that the Shen Xian Chuan, though a work of the 4th century, was merely an anonymous series of Taoist biographies, which some mistaken person labeled as Ko Hung's Shen Xian Chuan and divided into ten chapters, 1930-10. 
Kominami Ichiro 1978 analyzed the principles for immortality in GE's two books. For Zhe Hong in Baopuzi achieving immortality is a technical problem in which self-reliance is paramount. The stories in the Shenxian Zhuan, on the other hand, depict the attainment of immortality as a process based on submission and complete faith in a teacher who bestows the means of immortality on proven disciples. In this Eotter version, immortality does not come from within oneself, but is derived from external sources. Penny 1996 to 171. Kominami hypothesized that Shangqing school editors revised the Shenxian Zhuan from Ji's original text to emphasize their belief in external powers, but Penny 1996 to 173 finds Kominami's evidence unconvincing both for the existence of an original and its stance on the attainability of immortality. Campany faults arguments against Zhe Hong's authorship of the Shenxian Zhuan for committing two fallacies. One is the fallacy of textual holism, the assumption that if one or a small number of passages are problematic, then the overall attribution of authorship must be in error. The other fallacy is that of an assumption of consistency, that texts by a single author, whenever they were written during his lifetime, must have originally been completely consistent in their values and priorities as well as in how they handle specific figures, techniques, and events. 2002-119-120 since the Shenxian Zhuan is a compilation of biographies from various sources, textual inconsistencies are predictable. Topic. Textual versions During the Sui 581-618, Tang 618-907, and Song dynasties 960-1279, the Shenxian Zhuan was widely known and extensively quoted. Song editions of the Daozang included the text, but copies were lost when Mongol Yuan dynasty officials burned. Apocryphal. Taoist books in 1258-59 and 1280-81, Penny 1996-175. The 1444 Ming Dynasty Daozang, Taoist Canon, does not contain a complete version of the Shenxian Zhuan, and most received texts were compiled during the Qing Dynasty. Scholars have long suspected, writes Barrett, 2003-229, that the best known version currently available was actually confected for commercial rather than academic purposes in the 16th century from quotations in other sources, and that the direct tradition of the text has been lost. Some editions of the Shenxian Zhuan have different numbers and arrangements of biographies. Modern versions contain around 90 biographies, which differs from Tang era versions. Zhang Shouji Zhang Shou Jie S736 Commentary to the Shiji lists 69 biographies Penny 2008 to 887 The Buddhist scholar Liang Su Liang Su 753 to 793 reported that the text had 190 biographies According to Penny 2008 to 887 the unfortunate but inescapable conclusion derived from this text is that modern versions of Shenxian Zhuan are possibly less than half the size of an 8th century version of Shenxian Zhuan, and there is no reliable way of determining which biographies have been lost. Modern Shenxian Zhuan texts exist in several ten-chapter versions, one five-chapter version 1868 Yi Yuan Junhua Yi Yuan Junhua, and various one-chapter abstracts Penny 1996 to 178 minus 179, 198. Two ten-chapter versions are commonly available, but neither, concludes Penny, 2008 to 888 is entirely satisfactory. 
First, the 1794 Long Wei Mishu Long Wei Mishu edition, which stems from the 1592 Guang Han Wei Kongshu Guang Han Wei Kongshu version recompiled from sources including Taiping Guangji Taiping Guangji quotations, contains 92 hagiographies. Second, the 1782 Siku Quanshu Siku Quanshu edition, which stems from the 1641 Jiguj Jiguje edition published by Mao Jin Mao Jin, contains 84 hagiographies. The best known one chapter Ming Dynasty versions of the Shenxian Zhuan include the CA. 1620 Yiman Guangdu Yi Men Guangdu and 1646 Shuofu Shuofu versions Penny 1996 to 179 Topic Textual dating Dating the original Shenxian Zhuan text is impossible because its transmission stopped after the Southern Song Dynasty 1127-1279 book burnings. Campany concludes, We can be certain neither that Zhe Hong himself wrote even the earliest attested passages nor that he did not write event he latest attested. What we can be certain of is the date by which each passage existed and was attributed to the Shenxian Zhuan. Based on these criteria, we can conclude that material concerning 15 adepts is reliably attributed to the Shenxian Zhuan before the year 500, that material about an additional 70 figures is reliably attributed to Shenxian Zhuan by 650, 9 more figures by 700, 22 more by the year 1000, and so on. Imagining these groups of material arranged in concentric circles by source, the earliest at the center, one quickly sees that there is a substantial body of hagiographic text occupying the inner rings, attributable with relative confidence to Shenxian Zhuan and securely datable to the late Tang or earlier. Hence, of the total of 196 hagiographies in whole or fragmentary form included in my translation, some percentage of at least 87 is attested in Tang or earlier texts, 2002-127-128. Based upon detailed analysis of Shenxian Zhuan editions and fragments, Stefan Peter Bumbacher 2011 confirms the possibility that the text indeed is from Zhe Hong's brush. However, if it is a forgery, then it must have been fabricated in the time between Zhe Hong's death and the earliest testimonies in the early 5th century, most probably during the first decades after his decease. <laughs> Topic. Translations The earliest English translations from the Shenxian Zhuan, for instance, Lionel Giles or Eva Wang 1997 -96 -104, were only of selected biographies. Robert Campany 2002 wrote the first full translation, which many reviewers have praised. For example, Monumental, Cone 2002-329. A giant leap forward in our understanding of the religious world of early medieval China. Ben 2003-138, and Magisterial, Har 2004-486. Campany's book is more than a critical annotated translation, it is also a painstaking reconstruction of the textual strata. He analyzed Shenxian Zhuan quotations in some 40 sources dating from the 5th to 17th centuries, and chronologically recompiled them into three groups. Group A are biographies fully attested in works until the end of the Tang Dynasty 618 to 907, Group B are those only mentioned in these sources, and Group C are those ascribed to the Shenxian Zhuan only since the Song Dynasty 960-1279. Reviewers have criticized some of Campany's translations for disregarding conventions e.g. traditions for Zhuan biographies noted above. For instance, 2002-52-60, he translates Shiji Shijia lit. Corpse separation as escape by means of a simulated corpse. 
This obscure Taoist term, usually translated liberation from the corpse, Ben 2003-139 or corpse liberation. Robson 2004-490, refers to a method of Xi'an transformation involving a substitute corpse to fake death. Other Shiji translations include, release by means of a corpse. One's soul leaves the body and becomes an immortal after death. And, dissolve bodily into a spirit. Campany 2002 lists common elements in Shenxian Zhuan narratives involving Shiji transcendence. Employing Bianhua simulation of death Robinet 1993 an adept will typically pretend to become ill, feign death, and be buried. Later he or she is seen alive, always at a distant place, and when the coffin is opened, instead of a corpse, it contains some other object talisman, sword, clothing, etc. Adepts will occasionally change their names as a device to elude detection by spirits in the underworld bureaucracy. In the Baopuzi, Zhe Hong ranked Shijiexian Shi Jia Xian, escape by means of a simulated corpse transcendence, as the lowest of three categories, below Tianxian Tianxian, celestial transcendence, who ascend into the heavens and Dixian de Xian, earthbound transcendence who wander in the mountains. Topic. Significance Campany lists four reasons for studying the Shenxian Zhuan. For one thing, Zhe Hong's works afford us an unparalleled glimpse into certain aspects of Chinese religious life and practice at a critical time in the history of Chinese religions. For another thing, Zhe Hong records elements of religious ideas and disciplines relating to the quest for transcendence that might otherwise remain unknown to us, and his writings constitute a valuable terminus anti-Quem for them. With respect to Taoist religious history proper, furthermore, Zhe Hong's writings, and the practices, ideas, and values represented in them, constitute an important voice in ongoing inter- or interreligious rivalries and self-definitions. Finally, research on Zhe Hong's works has at least two contributions to make to the cross-cultural study of religions. The religion he documents was an extraordinary human response to the phenomenon of death and contributes new material for an as yet unrealized cross-cultural understanding of hagiography as a type of religious writing, a theme in religious studies heretofore largely dominated by Christian and Islamic categories, 2002-9-11. Penny summarizes why the Shenxian Zhuan is important. The biographies provide a wealth of information about how immortality was viewed in early medieval China, detailing important features of how immortals, and those who sought immortality, lived, their extraordinary abilities, their relationship to other people and society at large, including government at all levels, the way they interacted with other spiritual beings, the drugs they concocted, and how they transformed their environments for themselves. 2008-888 